Mafia has a fantastic definitive edition that does so much to upgrade the original game, but there could be more forthcoming with some information. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 things Mafia Definitive Edition doesn't tell you. Starting off at number 10, playing on classic difficulty. When you first start the game, you're given a couple of difficulty settings, the standards of easy, normal, hard, but the fourth one, classic, is both the hardest difficulty setting and the one that tries to emulate how hard the original Mafia was. On top of just being tougher in general, Classic also makes driving and police response set to simulation. So cars are harder to handle and the police will hound you for any and all minor traffic violations like speeding or nearly hitting a pedestrian. And those are just the obvious changes. It also completely turns off aim assist. So that's pretty significant because it's not just a small amount of lock on when aiming weapons. It actually makes guns easier to handle. So on classic, Tommy guns kick a lot more when firing and aim slower when looking down the sights. So basically, it's harder and in some ways is actually a little tougher than the original game, which is saying a lot. But here's the thing, classic mode is also probably the best way to play the game. Hear me out here, Mafia is a fun game, but what I think really made the original stand out was outside of the impressive graphics for 2002. Uh, simulation elements were actually really good. You had to be really careful in a shootout in the original game, like one or two shots would kill you. So you had to be really smart about how you handle things if you wanted to survive. This game does a great job retaining that feeling of danger in a gunfight and actually adds a few new wrinkles to things as well. Uh, you can actually sneak in some missions and make things easier, but the way enemies take cover and try to flank you can make certain sections a lot harder. It's got your modern third person shooter stuff like taking cover and actual sneaking mechanics without sacrificing how hard the original could be. Obviously it's up to you on how to play, like it's your game, play it how you want. But what's nice is they don't lock you into one difficulty, so if you end up having a little bit too much, bite off a little more you can chew, you can switch it off classic. However, at least for us, classic is really the way to go. It's really hard, but it's satisfying, mostly anyways. I mean, we'll talk about that race soon enough, don't worry. At number nine, there are secret cars in free ride mode. After you finish the first mission of the game, you unlock the option to drive around the city in free ride mode, which basically amounts to being a sandbox that lets you explore the city outside of the story mode. If you were a fan of the original, you probably remember free ride mode. This is where you could play a taxi minigame and another mode called free ride extreme that hit all kinds of stuff that was weird, like very weird around the city. In the definitive edition, they're kind of both combined into one mode called free ride mode. And there's, you know, a lot of secrets to be found. How these secret cars work is you need to drive to Bertone's auto service, go inside to find five postcards. Each one gives you a clue to a location of a secret car. These postcards appear as you complete certain missions in the story mode, so you pretty much need to finish the game for all five to appear. Also, you can't actually find any of the cars without first getting the postcards, so yeah, you gotta do the postcards first. The picture you gets pretty vague, but the text on each card describes what section of the city the car can be found in, as well as a little clue to their exact location. Like this one mentions construction, so you find the car at a construction site right here on Central Island. These little black markings tell you if you're on the right track, but of course you can always just look up the car locations if you're feeling lazy. Some of these cars can actually be really good, but they're all really ridiculous looking. <laughs> Still, it's pretty cool to find them and they can be pretty easy to mess. And at number eight, you can pay off the cops. This is a cool feature that shows up in the game, but it's totally unmentioned. If you get a one star wanted level that just shows a little ticket icon on it, you can get the cops to leave you alone without having to deal with the chase. All you have to do is pull over when a cop spots you, get out of your car, don't move and wait for the cop to walk up to you. As long as you stay still, Tommy will slip a bribe to the cop, letting you get off scot-free and calling off the search. This is actually a thing you could do the original game, so if you knew about it, obviously you still know about it, but it's cool to see it here in the definitive edition. Remember, it only works at wanted level one. You gotta have the little ticket symbol and you'll get them for like speeding or endangering a pedestrian on classic or stuff like that. If you're at two stars, they will just arrest you, which you obviously don't want. So yeah, if you get into a situation where it might be annoying to try to outrun the cops and you just got one star, just pay them off, who cares? Be done. At number seven, the race. Yes, the race is still here and guess what? It's still hard. Just mention the race around fans of the original Mafia and 
they'll know what you're talking about. It's infamous and for good reason. See, early on, there's a section where you have to fill in for a race car driver. Pretty standard stuff for games like this, but it's just incredibly hard for some reason. Like, you'd think they made this section easy because it's the only race in the game and it happens really early, but ah, no, uh-uh. It was insanely hard in the original, and on classic difficulty, this game makes it actually kind of harder. So here's some tips how to get through in one piece. First, run the course a few times, even if you're badly losing. The first few, you're probably going to lose. Good chance you're not going to catch up. Don't worry about it. Don't restart. Just use the opportunity to run the race and get the hang of some of the tougher turns. The worst turns right at the start is basically a U-turn, which pretty much makes you stop completely to go through it without wiping out. It's this turn where so many of these races are lost, and I, I can't even count the number of times that I have gone into this turn too fast, spun out, and just died. You need to do it slow, and from the outside, it's tricky, especially on the second lap, because you'll be going really, really fast. Then you'll hit this turn, and, well, it's at the end of one of the longest straightaways on the track, but always slow down. It's better to lose ground than spin out and never hope to recover, so just play it safe. Another tricky turn is on this straightaway, where the track bends to the left and then turns to the right soon after. If you're not careful, you can hit a little hill on the inside of the track and it'll send you flying. And unless you're really lucky, basically guarantees a restart. What you want to do with this turn is get a little bit off road on the inside of the left turn. That'll keep you on the road. And when you hit the next turn, it'll allow you to keep your speed up without going airborne. Uh, practice it a bit. It's a lot. Another thing, uh, being aggressive works. If you can cause the other racers to get jumbled together and basically stuck on each other, that's often your best bet for getting ahead. But be careful not to get your wheel stuck on another car. Try to be directly behind another car or directly parallel to them when you hit them and that'll lower your chances of getting stuck of course if all else fails just change the difficulty like if you don't care about the achievements just go for it nothing else in the game is even close to as hard as this damn race on classic and i mean that like by a long shot it's just the hardest thing in the game period and number six, don't forget to check with Vinny before you start a mission. It's a basic one, but on classic, it can make a huge difference. Well, actually, it can help on any difficulty. But whenever you start a new mission at Salieri's bar, before you jump into a car and head out, go up the stairs and see Vinny. He's a guy who will give you new guns and stuff occasionally. Even when the game doesn't straight up tell you to see him, just go up there. Beyond his chain link fence, there's a whole arsenal of guns for you to pick from, as well as an ammo box. And the game never tells you it's there. It's very handy though. Having a shotgun with full ammo for the start of a mission rather than just a dinky little pistol with an extra clip makes things a lot easier. So just check up there when you have the chance. At number five, some classic difficulty tips. Classic can be very tough, but like we said earlier, it's worth at least trying. So here's a few tips that might help you with that. Get out of the habit of reloading. In classic mode, just like the original game, when you reload, you discard all the ammo remaining in your clip. Only a few weapons don't do this, like the pump action shotgun, but even weapons like revolvers lose their ammo when you reload. Like, this is a serious problem with weapons like the Tommy gun, which has a 50 round clip, and you press the wrong button and up oh, there goes a ton of ammo, so be careful. Cover can also be a liability. It only takes a few hits to kill you on classic, so sometimes it's just a lot better to inch around corners and not bother with cover rather than trying your luck with the slow animation of coming out of the cover you're sometimes less exposed and it, it really makes a difference in congested areas on the other hand cover can be legitimately useful for blind fire shotgun guys like to bull rush you and basically takes one shotgun blast to take you down so having a shotgun your own to use for blind fire very useful not necessarily going to kill them but you'll stun them at least that might give you enough time to end them in general longer ranges also are safer in this game shotguns and pistols the most common weapons enemies have are pretty ineffective at long ranges so if you find a bolt action rifle or a sniper rifle hold on to it these are some of the only weapons that can hit anything consistently from a distance and they give you a big advantage obviously rifles aren't super helpful in smaller areas but in open ones yeah i mean just it'll greatly increase your chances of survival at number four, sneaking is maybe more useful than it might first seem. It's a new feature to this version of the game, so take advantage of it. Later in the game, you'll run into some areas that are very open, and you can get through them at least partially through stealth. It is a bit unforgiving. Guys in this game can actually see a few yards in front of them, but in some situations, that's actually not the worst thing. 
if you're spotted and they're not on alert, you don't have any guns out, they'll just walk up to you and tell you to leave. So just wait around a corner out of your enemy sights and take the guy out who's coming over to investigate. To go along with sneaking, it's important to fully explore the environment. Sometimes the game is hiding some pretty useful stuff. Weapons, first aid boxes, etc. give you a good reason to be looking around. Also, look down at the minimap every once in a while. It will show you stuff like ammo boxes and grenades and Molotov cocktails. And sometimes, while that stuff is out in the open, a lot of it's stashed away and the map can be a big help. Obviously, if you need a first aid box and you happen to find one this way, it's really going to save your ass. At number three, take advantage of the AI. Like on classic difficulty, enemies are aggressive. They'll kill you fast, but there's a few things you can do to outsmart them too. One of the most notable things is that enemies actually lose line of sight. It's never stated anywhere, but these guys can and will lose track of you. If an enemy spots you, they'll immediately hone in on your position. But if you stay hidden and move without being seen, they'll stay focused on where they think you are. So hit and run tactics can be really effective for fighting large groups of enemies, depending on the level, of course. Another thing to keep in mind is that enemies like to attack from closer ranges, like, well, guys with shotguns and pistols. They'll often just stay behind cover and hide, just waiting for you to get closer. In fact, though, sometimes it can be useful to trigger them trying to flank you, because then they end up being a lot more exposed. If you see some guy dug in, just turn your back on them for a second, they'll probably try to move up. That's when you can take them out. At number two, there are other secret cars in free ride mode. Yes, outside of the cars you can get from postcards, there's another series of cars you can get from these secret notes. How this works is that you can find little secret notes with clues on them that point to specific locations. Like this one in Salieri's bar, which tells you to go to the western part of Little Italy and listen for a bell. If you go to the right place, you'll start a mission for the secret car. These are not easy though. You have to drive the unlockable car to some place, usually on the other side of the map, without damaging the car at all with a very strict time limit. These challenges are of course no joke. Even with the driving difficulty set to normal rather than simulation, it's gonna be really tight getting one of these cars across town without damaging them. Doing this stuff unlocks some of the most interesting secret cars in the game though, so if you've got the patience, it's worth it. And finally, at number one, there are some pretty goofy Easter eggs. Uh, like, the original Mafia had some pretty weird stuff in it, and this game keeps some of it, at least in spirit. Like, here's an interesting one. Right before you get to the manager's office in the Corleone Hotel, open this side room, and hey, look, there's a guy tied up in clown makeup. There's some pretty uh, weird stuff to find in free ride mode, too. I don't want to give it all away, though. The game's lead designer, however, had a cryptic comment for you. He said, all I can say is, the truth is out there. Thanks, Mr. Vivada. Have you found any of these secrets in Mafia Definitive Edition? Have you gotten anywhere with it? Leave us a comment. Let us know how you're doing with the game. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.